Right, so um, thanks for coming to my talk. Uh, my name is Wei, I'm from uh, Singapore University of Technology and Design. Um, the top title of my talk today is uh, Semantic Passing with uh, Relaxed Hybrid Trees. All right, so this is our review of my talk today. Uh, I'll start with some background, and then we'll focus on our discussion on a particular previous work uh, called Hybrid Trees, and then we'll move to our uh, discussion on um, our newly proposed uh, representation uh, for semantic passing called a relaxed hybrid tree. And then uh, we we'll talk about uh, experiments and finally we'll conclude. All right, so um, in this work, the task of semantic passing is defined as uh, the task of passing complete uh, natural language sentence into their corresponding uh, cor uh, complete uh, semantic representations. So you may wonder what, uh, what are the possible semantic representations uh, here. So in fact, in this field, um, people have proposed uh, different representations for semantics. And examples include the lambda calculus expressions, which is uh, uh, commonly used in CCG-based uh, uh, semantic passing tasks, right? And also um, a representations based on uh, discourse uh, representation theory, and also uh, dependency-based uh, semantic uh, representations, and also uh, forest or dag based representations for the semantics. And finally, uh, logical form uh, representations with uh, tree structures. So in this work, we will focus on the last uh, class of uh, semantic representation for the semantic passing task. And I would like to say that um, the model or the algorithm presented in this work can be extended to some other formalisms, but uh, we'll leave them as uh, future works. All right, so uh, in semantic passing, the tasks can also be roughly divided into two categories, task-independent semantic passing and uh, task-specific uh, semantic passing. So in task-independent uh, semantic passing works, uh, people focus on building algorithms and models to perform general purpose uh, semantic passing without considering uh, the downstream tasks. But in task-specific uh, semantic passing, um, typically we have a task, a downstream task in mind. Uh, we want to do something to optimize the performance of the downstream task. So in this work, we focus on the task-independent semantic passing. All right, so here we have an example um, taken from our training set. Um, we have a sentence paired with uh, its uh, complete uh, semantic representation. And this uh, semantic representation has a tree structured uh, form. And each node is called a uh, semantic uh, unit. And you can actually convert this uh, tree representation into a logical form as uh, follows. So you can um, actually use this logical form to interact with some other components to perform some other interesting tasks. All right, so our task here, uh, our goal here really is to learn a model which can uh, allow us to transform the text into uh, the following semantic representation, All right? So in order to achieve this goal, uh, we need to make some assumptions uh, here. So um, we need to know how we can establish the connections between the words and the semantic, to uh, semantic units, right? So the assumption here is that we need to build a joint representation for both the text and the semantics. So let's look at uh, what are the uh, previously proposed joint representations in the field. In the first work, uh, the researchers proposed uh, to use a, a machine translation model for semantic parsing. So their joint representation for text and uh, semantics would be uh, synchronous CFG derivation trees. And in the second work, um, the researchers proposed to use a recursive phrase to tree mapping for uh, jointly representing uh, the text and the semantics. And the third work, uh, they assume there, is, there exists an integrated uh, syntactic and semantic uh, tree representation for uh, both semantics and text. And of course, in CCG-based um, semantic parsers, uh, the assumption is that there exists a CCG derivation tree uh, that connects both the text and the semantics. And recently, uh, there's a work uh, on um, tree transducer based uh, semantic parsing. So the assumption is that there exists a tree transducer that allows you to map uh, input linear structure into tree structures uh, of the semantics. Okay, so finally, um, we have the hybrid tree representations, which we proposed uh, in the year 2008. And uh, the assumption here is that um, we assume there exists a joint representation 
of both text and uh, uh, the semantics in a, a structure called a hybrid tree. And this kind of structure is uh, uh, generated from an underlying uh, process. So uh, because we are going to build our new representation based on this work, so we'll spend uh, the next few slides to give more uh, details about this work. So this slide shows an example hybrid tree, which contains both the semantics and the corresponding natural language sentence, uh, which was shown in the, uh, one of the pre previous slides. So uh, if you look at the representation here, the internal nodes are semantic uh, units, and the leaf nodes are natural language words. Okay. So the assumption here is this kind of representation or the structure is generated from an underlying generative process. So to understand it better, let's look at how we actually generate the hybrid tree representation. So first, we generate the root semantic unit here. And then from this semantic unit, we generate an abstract pattern. So in this case, it is uh, XW. X refers to uh, another semantic uh, unit, and W refers to a sequence of natural language words. All right, so after that, we generate the actual semantic uh, unit and the actual words. Okay. Now we have a newly generated a semantic unit, and then we generate the abstract pattern, abstract pattern below that uh, newly generated uh, semantic unit, and then we generate the actual words and uh, the semantic unit, and we just repeat this process until uh, the complete uh, hybrid tree is generated. Okay. So such a process essentially models uh, joint probability of both uh, the semantics and the natural language words. Okay. And at the same time, it produces a hidden uh, structure H here. So M here refers to a semantic representation and uh, W refers to a complete uh, uh, natural language sentence. So here H refers to the hybrid tree, this complete structure. Okay. Because we have the assumption that the words are actually generated from their corresponding natural uh, semantic uh, units, so naturally this process also gives you the correspondence between the words and uh, the semantic units. Right? So if you define the lexicon used for semantic parsing as the correspondence between the words and the semantic units, this process right, also uh, gives you the, uh, uh, a lexicon in an implicit manner. Okay. And in fact, this is just a one way to produce um, a hybrid tree. For a given natural language sentence and a semantic pair, there exist many possible hybrid trees. Okay, so here I have a, a second example. So how do we find the most probable hybrid tree? So in practice, we use the EM algorithm to uh, figure out what's the most probable hybrid tree associated with a, a sentence a semantics pair. Right, so the hybrid tree algorithm uh, comes with several interesting properties. First, it is a uh, language in independent, so we make very minimal assumptions about uh, the language. And also, as we said, um, it performs integrated uh, lexicon acquisition and uh, semantic parser. Right? When you uh, learn the semantic parser, at the same time, you are also learning the lexicon. And also, uh, we developed the efficient algorithm for training, and the algorithm is, uh, has a time complexity, which is uh, uh, cubic in the number of words and linear in the number of uh, semantic units. But as a generative model, the hybrid tree uh, framework also comes with some uh, limitations. So first, it is unable to capture some long distance dependencies because of the strong independence and assumptions that we have made in the generative process. And second, it is unable to incorporate some uh, features as a generative model. Right. So to help you understand the limitations of the hybrid tree model better, um, here we have an example. Assume we have already learned uh, a hybrid tree model and we have learned the model parameters. Now in the testing phase, uh, we are given two same sentences. The first one is how many states do not have a river? And second is how many states have no rivers? Essentially, they are, um, I mean, uh, semantically, these two sentences are the same. Um, but um, the structures of the two sentences are a little bit different. Okay, so uh, ideally, uh, the model should be able to recover the two um, hybrid trees as shown. But if you look at the probability of the first hybrid tree and the second hybrid tree, 
you'll find that the probability for the second tree is much lower. So the reason here is that, in fact, the word no should really be aligned to the semantic unit to exclude. But because the structure of the sentence is very different from the structure of the, sent of, of the semantics, there's no way for you to produce a hybrid tree that can allow you to capture the correspondence between this semantic unit and this word. Okay. And another issue here is the word rivers never appeared together with this semantic unit in the training set. So as a result, there's no way for you to establish the connection between uh, these two. So to solve the fir first problem, uh, we need to introduce some long distance dependencies. And to, to solve the second problem, um, because in this case, right, you see that the river uh, is really aligned to this uh, semantic unit correctly. So if we can introduce some features at the word level, we can potentially uh, establish the correct uh, dependencies between the, the semantic unit and the word here. Right? So to solve the second problem, we need to introduce features. All right, so um, we, we are going to make an extension to the original hybrid tree representation. So the idea here is very simple, and it leads to uh, a new representation called a relaxed hybrid trees. So uh, we start from our original hybrid tree here. Uh, what we do is we associate with each semantic unit in the original hybrid tree with a complete sequence of words that can ever appear uh, below this semantic unit. Right? So for example, in this case, the sequence of words that can appear below this semantic unit in the hybrid tree is the states have no reverse, okay? So we, we as, uh, associate this uh, semantic unit with this complete sequence of words. So in this way, we can allow um, the model to capture unbounded long distance dependencies here. So in other words, so for, for example, you can see here the word no is really um, associated with this uh, semantic unit. But um, it doesn't matter where this word no appears in this hybrid tree, as long as it appears below this semantic unit, the such kind of dependencies can be captured. Okay. But um, another problem here is that to model this kind of uh, structure, it seems to be very challenging to use a generative process. And also, uh, as we mentioned, we need to introduce features. So naturally, we want to move from a generative model to a discriminative model. Right? So instead of uh, modeling a joint probability, we model uh, the conditional probability here. So this is essentially a latent variable discriminative model. Here, H is really a latent uh, um, relaxed hybrid tree. Okay, so uh, this joint probability is proportional to this quantity, and this W is the model parameter. And uh, this gives you the, the feature vector defined over the relaxed hybrid tree. So our goal in the training phase is to tune the model parameter such that uh, this quantity is uh, uh, optimized, our objective function is optimized. So, um, um, the standard procedure here is uh, to use uh, gradient-based methods. So we need to compute the objective function, and then we, we need to take the gradient uh, of the objective function with respect to the model parameters W, and then we use uh, either gradient descent or uh, LBFJs to optimize the model parameters. Okay, so uh, let's look at the computation of the objective function first. Um, it actually consists of two terms here. So the numerator is in fact, a summation uh, of uh, several terms here. And in fact, this term can be computed using uh, an algorithm which is very similar to the one used uh, for the generating model, and provided uh, the, the features are defined in a certain way. Right? And let's look at the denominator. So it involves the summation of all the possible um, semantic uh, trees. Um, so to solve this problem, we represent all the possible semantic trees using a packed forest representation. Okay, it turns out this algorithm is also similar to the one that we used before in a generation task. Okay, and uh, the gradients can also be computed in a similar way using dynamic programming. So I'm going to skip the technical details here. And once we have the objective function and the gradients, we can use the LBFGS to optimize the model parameters. Okay, so uh, in the decoding phase, we are given the model parameters and a new sentence W. We want to find the optimal uh, semantic representation for that W, right? And if you write it, then you, you'll find that it involves a summation over all the hidden variables here, um, the, the relaxed uh, hybrid tree, okay? 
So, but computation of this, um, this summation is very expensive. So what we do is we replace the summation by a max operation. So what does this mean? It means that we are given a new sentence, and what we do is we find the most probable relaxed hybrid tree that contains that sentence. And then from that relaxed hybrid tree, we extract the semantic representation. Okay, so we can use a similar dynamic programming algorithm for this task. So uh, for features, uh, okay, so um, we define features uh, into two groups, um, local features and uh, the long distance features. Okay, so the local features are defined locally as a combination of the semantic units and uh, the words that appear directly below that semantic units. And specifically, we define character level features here. Um, so they are defined as a combination of the semantic unit and the prefixes of the words that appear below that uh, semantic unit. So our hope is that these features can help us to do some implicit uh, morphological analysis. Okay, so um, the span features or long distance features are defined as uh, the combination of the semantic unit and uh, the word unigram, bigram, trigrams um, for the, the sequence of words that appear uh, below the semantic unit. Okay, finally, uh, let's look at the uh, experiments. Um, we conducted our experiments on the standard multilingual GeoQuery dataset, uh, which was uh, released uh, by Jones and in their SEO 2012 paper. Uh, the dataset consists of uh, four different languages, English, Thai, German, Greek. And uh, just to make sure that our system's performance are directly comparable to all the previous works, we uh, follow the same experimental setup to conduct uh, our uh, experiments. So first, we make a comparison between our uh, work and uh, the, the hybrid tree. So here, the hybrid tree is not really just a, a generative model. It is a generative model augmented with a re-ranking phase. So in the re-ranking phase, some global features can be introduced. And even um, as a case, uh, our system still perform um, better than the hybrid tree model <clears throat> when all the features are used. And then we compare our system's performance with uh, several state-of-the-art uh, system's uh, performance. And specifically, we look at uh, uh, WASP, which is a machine translation-based uh, um, semantic parser. And uh, hybrid tree is what we just discussed. And UBL is a uh, CCG-based uh, semantic parser. And uh, finally, the tree transducer based as many possible. Right, so, so first we used all the features and we found that out of the four different languages, um, for English and Thai, our system uh, was able to achieve the best performance in terms of both accuracy and uh, F1 measure. But if you look at uh, Greek, uh, in terms of accuracy, our system still uh, achieves the best performance, but uh, in terms of F1, was based uh, slightly better than us. And, but if you look at uh, German, uh, our system is actually worse than several previous systems. Okay, to understand uh, this better, we uh, performed some additional experiments. So first we excluded uh, the local features, which are able to capture the local dependencies between uh, semantics and uh, text. And if we do that, we see that uh, the performance um, in general drops, right, except for uh, German. So this indicates that the local dependencies are important for semantic parsing task. And then we try to exclude the, the character level features. We found that um, for English, German, and uh, Greek, the performance drops. But for uh, Thai, uh, we got uh, uh, improvement in the performance. So, um, this, this means that for these three European languages, our character level uh, features are really doing interesting morphological, uh, morphological analysis. But for this Asian language, Thai, it seems uh, these kind of features are not uh, useful. Okay, so finally, we try to drop the, uh, the long distance features, uh, span features. We found that for English and Thai, the performance drops. It's, this indicates that uh, these features are useful for these two languages. For Greek, we got a slight improvement. So it means that uh, the long distance uh, 
features seems to not to be very uh, useful for this language. But for German, we got a, a significant improvement. Okay. So this probably means that um, um, the long distance features for uh, German contains a lot of noise uh, in this case. But in general, if you look at this um, table, uh, our system uh, is, is actually uh, giving performance which are comparable to uh, state-of-the-art uh, systems. All right, so to conclude, uh, in this work, we introduced a novel relaxed hybrid tree representation for better task independent semantic parsing. And this model um, performs integrated uh, lexicon acquisition and uh, semantic parsing. It, uh, it is able to capture unbounded uh, long distance dependencies, which are uh, not yet um, captured in many existing uh, semantic parsing systems. Okay, and uh, also it supports uh, efficient algorithms for training and uh, inference. Also, it is easy to add additional features. Okay, so in the future, we may want to explore how to uh, incorporate more uh, language-specific features, or may uh, want to uh, incorporate distributional semantics into our current model. And finally, uh, the code will be available on this website. And thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. So, so the performance really seemed to vary quite a lot across language with the different features. I don't know if you had any deeper insights and in, you know language specific error analysis kind of insights there, and also sort of uh, algorithmically, did you maybe if you put a feature selection algorithm in there, you could you know go tick off all those results and get really quite a gap overall. Have you thought about that? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, actually, I, I don't know anything about German, so I didn't actually uh, have a have a chance to look at uh, what's going on uh, with the uh, with the German. Um, but in terms of feature selection, um, yeah, that's uh, that's something we want to probably want to do in the future. Um, but uh, we have uh, over a million features uh, for each language, so. So in this table, um, the hybrid tree plus, is that a discriminative model or a generative model? Well, it's a mixture of uh, both. And we start with a generating model, then we generate an unbased list in a testing case, and we do the re-ranking. So is that the same thing that happens in the relaxed hybrid tree? No, trick? No, no. no. So did you try a fully discriminative case uh, uh, model for the hybrid hybrid tree model? So that's a, that's a, um, oh, you mean exclude those uh, global features? Yeah, so oh. so that will be the no span features then? Yes, that okay. would be this uh, row. Yeah. Okay, makes sense, thanks. Thanks, any more questions? <laughs> 